Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you tuning in. Today we are going to do a review of a watch I've had for quite some time in my collection. And I have thought about doing a review on it and then I forgot about doing a review on it. And um, it's been one of my favorite watches in my collection for, oh, three or four years now. Uh, well, maybe three years. Uh, it is the Seiko SSC081 Adventure Solar Chronograph. This is um, a very popular watch, or was at one time a popular watch, and it used to be able to get got for 200 230 250 $100. Now, if you, I did a price check uh, the last week on Amazon, it, and it's been anywhere between 350 and over four hundred dollars so um, I don't know if that means the supply is uh, drying up on it and it's becoming uh, you know harder to get so of course the prices are going up but uh, you know if this is a watch that you've had on your radar and you are thinking about getting it I suggest you pop on it before it is gone uh, like I said it's it was around before as you can see on mine I bought the like I said I think I've had it about three years and uh, it has the Prospects logo on it. But before the Prospects lo uh, logo, it, I believe it just said Seiko Solar, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure how much longer this model will be available. So if uh, it's something that you're thinking about getting, you should probably get it. Um, it is a Seiko Saturday, definitely. Wearing my iconic Seiko Sarp 035. One of my favorite work dress watches. It's a Saturday, so why not? I actually had this on earlier, but for the video, I threw on my uh, Sarb. But anyway, so yeah, let's uh, talk about the, the case here. It is 41 and a half uh, millimeters diameter, 49 lug to lug, 13 thick, and a 20 millimeter lug width. And as you can see, I have it on a vintage Bond NATO. Uh, as uh, like most uh, Seiko straps that came with this. Actually, it wasn't that bad from what I could remember, but it still wasn't worthy of wearing. So I've, uh, I've had this on several NATOs over the year. Currently, it's on, like I said, a Blue Shark, a vintage Bond Blue Shark. And I turned it into a, I modded the, the strap real quick. I cut off that inner, the other, uh, strap and loop off of it just uh, for the simplicity and the wearability so um, yeah let's talk about the case uh, the case is fully polished uh, all over no brushing at all fully polished case bit of a hand magnet especially up on the bezel I'm uh, always wiping it off so what do we have we have a hard lux crystal Seiko's hard lux uh, 100 meter water resistance rating, non signed crown, just a push pull at the three o'clock. At the two and four, we have the chronograph pushers, and at uh, I guess the 10 o'clock position is a crown for the internal bezel, which I've never used, and I'm not sure about the function functionality of it since there is no locking mechanism on it, so uh, not sure how accurate. Uh, you know the compass would be is any movement or any time you brush up against something it could uh, change the azimuth on it so I think it's just there for looks and cosmetics and I like it it's cool you know uh, don't normally have a crown at the 10 o'clock position so that's a nice uh, nice look to it uh, like I said the regular crown at the three is just to push pull So the dial, let me zoom in here on the dial. This is a, a busy dial, uh, and of course the compass adds to that, but uh, let's get the chronograph going. There we go. So at the 12 o'clock we have the, the running minute for the chronograph, well the one hour, the 60, 60 minute subdial at the 12 o'clock. We have the date window at the three along with the Seiko logo and Prospects Solar logo. At the six o'clock position, we have a 12 hour alarm clock, meaning that you could set the alarm 12 hours from the current time. 
and I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, for one, you would never be able to pick it up. You could not hear it on this video. I don't know if you remember the old Casio watches from the 80s, the little alarms. It's, it's just a very, very slight beeping noise, uh, not even worth um, setting. Uh, there are a couple of videos on YouTube that show you that, and again, you can't hear the alarm on any of them. And at the 9 o'clock position, we have the, the running seconds. And, and again, this is a solar watch, so just like a Citizen Eco Drive, if it, uh, it has a six month power reserve uh, using the Seiko Solar V172 solar movement. And if the, uh, the charge is low on it, the running second hand will skip every two seconds. As you can see, it's got a nice uh, cadence and changing every second here. But if the power supply was low on it, it would uh, stutter and skip for two seconds. So that way, you know, you have to get it out in the light. Uh, again, just like a uh, eco drive for the citizen, uh, natural sunlight, artificial light, any kind of light. So, you know, this even in the watch box with a glass top, the thing is charging all the time. So uh, I, I doubt you would ever need to charge it as long as you just always have it out. What are my likes and dislikes about this watch? Well, I uh, I just touched upon the solar, you know, living in the Southwest, it's always nice. I love my automatic watches, but it's great to have a solar uh, battery powered watch. So just for the grab and go when I don't want to sit there and set the date and set the time on one of my automatics. So it's always nice uh, to have a solar powered watch. It is a chronograph, speaking of, so it's been running. Zoom in on the, so you see the the chronograph 60 minute hand up at the 12 is ticked over a couple. So let's stop it and it resets. And the thing I love about this particular watch, the chrono or quartz chronographs in, period, in general is uh, they have the, the nice smooth uh, sweeping reset uh, motion. Whereas the automatic chronos are great, don't get me wrong, but I don't necessarily like the snapbacks. I always, I always think the Dagum hand is gonna snap off or something. And uh, I, over, I like the overall design of this watch. I think it's quite unique. Like I said, it has uh, the crown at the 10 o'clock and the, the three crowns on the other side of it. And um, it's just a, a overall different looking watch. Uh, it's the only watch in my collection. I have several chronographs and, uh, and whatnot, but this watch has a look of its own. Um, and the, my one dislike, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect watch, but the one thing I do not like, or when I go a long period of time without wearing it, I have to uh, reset my mind when I do put it on. If you notice the, the handset, especially the hour hand, they almost look identical to the index markers. And so at first, when you start wearing it, you have to sit there and pick up where the hands are to tell the time uh, because it can look confusing to the eyes. But like I said, when, uh, when you wear it regularly, your eyes adjust to the dial and you, you, know, you can tell the time in a, a, your regular quick glance. But when you put it on after not wearing it for quite a while, you have to get used to it again because the handset does blend in with the index markers. But yeah, overall, like I said, one of my favorite watches. And uh, you know, if this is a watch that you've been thinking about for quite some time, I would recommend getting it now while the, uh, while the inventory is there because they are quite expensive now uh, compared to when I bought mine just a few years ago. So uh, who knows, they may be, the inventory may be drying up. But let me throw it on wrist here real quick. Quick uh, look at the Saab. So yeah, there you go. It is like I said, a 41 and a half uh, millimeter watch on my seven and a quarter inch wrist on the NATO strap. Great wear, great, great wearability. 
So, yep, there you go. That is the Seiko SSC081. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next video.